Hey guys, welcome back to Fancy Tips. Julian here for another very exciting episode. This one about my top 25 goalie rankings. Some big news for me in my world. I just got married this weekend and I had such an incredible wedding and ceremony. I had such an amazing amount of friends and family there and uh, it was just so wonderful and I'm just so grateful that I have the support system and the friends and family that I do. Okay, okay, enough about me. Before we jump into the list though guys, drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Trust me guys, you're not going to regret subscribing to this channel. I'm constantly putting out videos and throughout the season, I'll continue to do the exact same thing with weekly waiver wire drop videos, you name it it'll be out. You do not want to miss out on that. If you do want to take your support to the next level, hit that join button either on YouTube or Patreon and you unlock so many perks like being able to join my Patreon exclusive fantasy league and the spots for that are running out quickly guys. So be sure to join my Patreon and quickly. Let's jump now right into the content today and let's take a look at my number one goalie in fantasy. And that is Connor Hellbuck with an ADP of 25.3. He was the best goalie in the NHL last year, and I expect him to do it once again. He is my number one option, and he's like a lock to start 60 plus games. To add to that, Winnipeg has the best off night schedule with only eight back to back games the entire season. So, Connor Hellbuck is absolutely going to play lots of games and should definitely be great on your fantasy team if you do decide to draft them that early. My number two goalie is Thatcher Demko. He needs to stay healthy, but if he does, he could easily get 55 or more starts on a very good team. I like Thatcher Demko a lot and his ADP is pretty decent. Igor Shosturkin is my number three goalie. He's also a very, very good goalie who will get about 55 starts on a top tier team. Jonathan Quick was very good last year, so I think 55 is right around what Shesterkin will get as long as Quick is playing well once again. I think his ADP of 16.1 is too high. I'm not a fan of taking a goalie that early. I'd rather go for Hellbuck around 25 if you are going to take a goalie that early. At number four, I have UC Saros, who's my favorite goalie in the league, who will start a lot of games for Nashville. 60 plus at the very least, on a much improved Nashville team. They are an offensive juggernaut now, and they're pretty good defensively as well, and obviously Saros is incredible, so should get a good amount of wins this year. I think Saros is primed to have a great season. Number five, I have Sergei Bobrovsky, who's got an ADP of 40.7, and obviously he's a Stanley Cup winner. Just won that cup. And he should be a lot for minimum 55 starts and plenty of wins. Now, I know a lot of other fantasy hockey channels are fading him a little bit, saying that Spencer Knight's going to get so many starts. Give me a break. Spencer Knight has had quite a few seasons now to prove that he can be that guy that we think he can be. And he's kind of failed to do so uh, over the last few years. Last year, didn't play any NHL games at all. Play, spent most of the season in the player assistance program, which is good. I'm glad he got help, but I don't really see him eating into Bobrovsky's workload too much as long as Bobrovsky plays well like he did last year. At number six, I have Jeremy Swayman, and I am cautiously optimistic about him. It's his first year as the full-time starter in Boston. Will he be able to handle it? Corpusalo should be decent on a decent team, so he could command some starts too if Swayman does struggle with the workload. I'm not overly concerned about this happening though. I am projecting Swayman to get about 55 starts. At ADP though, a little bit too early. At number 7, I have Andre Vasilevsky. He is the guy in Tampa Bay. We'll get 60 plus starts easy peasy because Jonas Johansson is a really bad backup. Only reason he didn't hit that last year is because he got injured. At number eight, I have Jake Ottinger. He is the guy in Dallas. Casey DeSmith is the backup this year, and he's a decent backup, but won't command more than a backup workload. Ottinger is a very good goalie on a very good team. He is a pretty solid pick, no matter where you get him in the draft. I have Ilya Sorokin at number nine, and he does belong in this position, as long as he gets the 55 starts that he got last year. Barlamov did look like the better goalie towards the end of the year, last year, and they did also ride him in the playoffs. 
but I can't imagine they give up on Sorokin so quickly. They should feed him plenty of starts early on in the season, and if he isn't atrocious, he should get plenty more. At number 10, I have Stuart Skinner, and he is one of the safest picks in the draft. Honestly, he's super not risky. He is the guy in Edmonton. I think that a lot of people hate on him, but he's a very good goalie and doesn't have a lot of competition. He's on a very good Edmonton team. Should get a lot of wins. At number 11, I have Uko Pekalukunen. He's the first kind of steal of the draft all the way down at ADP of 90.3. He showed how great he could be last year. I am expecting him to be the full-time starter, about 55 games, with Reimer as the backup. I know a lot of other fantasy hockey channels have Levi listed as the backup but I'm not seeing it, guys, because Levi, if they wanted him to play, why would they have signed Reimer? I think Levi is going to be their AHL guy this year. They're going to try to develop him as much as possible so that in the future, Levi is a really great goalie. But right now, I think this is UPL's time, or 6K as I like to call him on this channel. I like him a lot this year. Got him at number 11. At number 12, I have Jacob Markstrom with an ADP of 59.1. New Jersey, after missing the playoffs last year, are one of the cup favorites. Let's see if Markstrom lives up to the hype. I'm expecting a full starter share of games, about 55 or so, with Jake Allen absorbing the rest. At number 13, Jordan Bennington. He quietly had a very good season last year, with Hofer breathing down his neck. And I'm expecting the same from him this year, with Hofer continuing to breathe down his neck, about 55 starts or so, and Hofer getting the rest. At number 14, Alexander Georgiev is someone who I have big concerns about, which is why I've dropped him so much. I do think Justus and Noonan is a pretty solid backup, and I can see him eating into his workload this year. There's no way he gets 62 starts once again. I think Anunin could, if he continues to play well and play better than Georgiev, could eat into as many as half of the starts in Colorado. At number 15, Linus Ulmark. Is he finally the answer for them in that? I think so. Stats obviously won't be as good as they were in Boston, but I'm still expecting a pretty solid season as the full-time starter in Ottawa. I have him as my number 15 goalie. At number 16, I have Tristan Jari. I'm projecting him for about 55 starts, but it could be less if Nedeljkovic continues to impress like he did last season at the end of the year. I'm not overly high on Jari this year, which is why I have him at number 16. But I think Pittsburgh's not going to give up on him, and he's going to get the starts. And honestly, Pittsburgh should have a better year than they did last year. Jowry is a pretty good value at his current ADP. At number 17, Connor Ingram. I'm seeing about 50 starts with Vimalka absorbing the rest. Utah has a bit of a better team as well, so definitely not a bad pick here. At number 18, could be the steal of the draft at this ADP all the way at 172.6. It's Joey Decord. I'm seeing him getting about 50 starts with Grubauer getting the other 32, mostly because they'd like to give starts to Grubauer for whatever reason, but Decord was amazing last year. He's a much better goalie than Grubauer. Grubauer hasn't been good in Seattle for like three years now. This is Decord's time, and if you're getting him this late in the draft for a starting goalie on a pretty decent team, that is very good value. At number 19, I have Aiden Hill. I'm projecting him only to get about 45 starts and Sam Sonoff to get the other 37. That'll allow them both to stay healthy and Aiden Hill should do pretty well under those conditions. At number 20, I have Frederick Anderson. He is this low because of his massive injury risk. He could end up being a lot higher or a lot lower depending on his health. I'm seeing him, if he does stay healthy, getting about 40, 41 starts uh, with Kachekov getting the other half of the starts just so that they are actually able to keep Anderson healthy. At number 21, Samuel Montembeau is the starter in Montreal this year. I see him getting about 50 starts. Montreal is improving every single year with more and more young talent. And I see them being half decent this year. Montembeau should get about 50 starts and Primo should get about 32 starts. I have Joseph Wool at number 22. And before you Leaf fans get all mad at me, I have nothing against Joseph Wool. I think he's a fantastic goalie. I only have him this low because I have serious concerns about him splitting starts with Solars. I think he will be the 1A guy and he should command about 45 starts. But Stolarz probably sees about 37 starts himself. He is a seriously underrated goalie. I've been saying it for so many years. One of the most underrated goalies in the NHL. And I think he's going to play super well for Toronto and push for a lot more starts. At number 23, I have Philip Gustafson. He should bounce back a little bit this year after a very disappointing 2023-24 season. I still see him as the 1A option in Minnesota, getting about 45 starts or so with Fleury getting the rest. 
However, if they both struggle once again, they do have Jesper Wallstedt, who could come in as that number one guy. He's very young and very talented. They have to play well, otherwise they're done. At number 24, I have Darcy Kember. And the reason there's two stars next to his name is because him being this high is contingent on him looking good in training camp. That's because LA also has Riddick and Copley for him to compete with. But I do think Kemper bounces back this year and is LA's 1A option. I do have him at 24. Just keep an eye on him at training camp to make sure that he's playing well and does get that number one spot. Number 25, I have Charlie Lindgren. He should split pretty evenly with Logan Thompson, who's a very solid goalie in his own right. If he plays like last year, he'll have another very good season on a somewhat improved Washington team. Did you guys think I was done there? Nah, I got you guys. Five more, okay? At number 26, I have Dustin Wolf, and he's got the legitimate opportunity to be the number one in Calgary this year. He could make huge strikes, and his ADP could be a steal. But he does have to prove it first. His ADP is 173.5, meaning that it could be an absolute huge steal if he does get a lot of starts and does play well in Calgary. They're not that bad of a team. And if you get him as a third goalie, that's amazing. If you get him even as a second goalie, that's not too bad. At number 27, I have Tarasov, and I see him as the number 1A goalie over Merzlikens. I see him getting about 45 starts or so, but honestly could get even more if he plays well, which I think he will. His stats last year were not bad at all, and I'm expecting him to continue to play pretty well. He is flying super under the radar right now. He does not even have an ADP and is only being drafted in 5% of leagues. At number 28, I have Logan Thompson as the 1B in Washington. And I can see him and Lindgren splitting starts pretty evenly, 41 starts a piece. It's going to be pretty hard to tell who's going to come up out on top on that if any of them do or if they're going to split completely evenly all season. If one of them obviously plays way better, they'll probably start commanding a few more starts. But for now, that's impossible to project. I have Logan Thompson at 28. At number 29, I have Peter Kachekov. He is the 1B option in Carolina, but honestly could get exactly half the starts if that's what they opt to do because they want to keep Anderson healthy. I think he might end up getting even more starts than Anderson this year, probably 50 starts or so, because honestly, Anderson always gets injured. So this ranking might be low, but it's hard to rank someone banking on an injury. So for now, he's down here at 29. At number 30, I have Stolarz. He is going to seriously compete for starts in Toronto this year, and I see him as a legitimate 1B option, getting about 37 starts or so. Could get even more, though, if he performs. I've been saying it for so many years. Stolarz is the most underrated goalie in the NHL. And that's it, guys. Did you like my list today? Did you agree? If you did or you didn't, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what I have ranked too high and what I have ranked too low in your opinion. Obviously, we're not going to agree with every single list. If we did, there'd be no point in watching these videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.